being able to monitor how you're performing in a particular metric is great if you've got one consistent target line. But what happens if you wanted to be able to look over different periods and actually have a target set for each period so it's unique to each one and be able to have a reference line as well and see if it's actually above or below that particular target. Well, I'm going to show you how you can do that for a bar and column chart and then also include conditional formatting to show if it's above or below target and include data labels that will give you not only the actual amount that's in the actual data but also the variance as well and a title that will give you the result for the whole period you're looking at in this case 2017. So with that in mind let's jump over to my Power BI desktop. So if you want to follow along I've got the data set and the dim date table saved in the description below and then all you have to do to be able to install both is we go to get data excel workbook and then once you imported that and then you find the file fact underscore customer order and then once that's loaded in all you need to do is open up the notepad that is for the dim date table and then you just need to go down to new sources blank query once you're in there go to advanced editor remove this data here paste in the dim date table code that is in the notepad click done and then change the name up here to dim underscore date and then you have this whole dim date table then all you have to do is click close and apply then once that's loaded up go to model view and then drag the date of the dim date table to the order date which is in the customer order table which is there so you drag that to that and then you've got your table connected ready to use for this walkthrough as you can see i've got the charts already created here so you got that as a reference so if i just go over to this page we can see it here and then we can use that as a reference as we work side by side by creating this from scratch first thing you want to do is go to the clustered column chart click on that and then it will pop up with the actual chart there we then want to drop in a very simple measure into the y-axis which is the sales and under here i've called it sales hyphen customer order and then all that is is a sum of the sales column in the fact underscore customer order table and then i've just made it a whole number and then for the x-axis that's where you want to go to your dim date table and then we want to come down to month short and if we just drop that in you can now see we have it here if it's not in order if you click on the month short then go up to sort by column under column tools and then select month and then this might pull it december to january if it does do that all you have to do is go up to the more options on top of your chart go to sort axis make sure you've got month short selected and then it might look like this and then you can go sort ascending and then it puts it in the correct order so now we've got that set up what we want to be able to do is then have a measure that shows us the previous year as well and what the previous year looks like i just made it a bit bigger is it's using the sales customer order which is what we're using here in the y-axis and then all i've done is just called it previous year target same name and then within calculate i've just used same period last year and then pointed it to the dim date so it's basically using the order date to be able to give you what the same period is for last year so you're getting now 2016 data in this particular one and we're going to use that as a target if you've got something else you want to use as the target this is the same measure that you would be using for that particular target so if i was just to drop that in so we can just have a look at that as a reference we can now see we have previous year as this blue and then this current year which is 2017 as green so 2016 is this blue so now we have that click back on the chart if we go back up to format visual we now want to create these little target lines and what these little target lines will do as you can probably work out here is it's going to reach to the top of these particular bars because this is our target is previous year and to do so you want to come up to this part here which is like a little magnifying glass and then down here you'll find error bars and then within error bars you can actually select what you want your measure to be and obviously we want to still focus on what is our actual measure which is this one here the green one because that's actual year and then we want to come down to options here and go enabled on and then you've got this upper bound and lower bound and what this is is going to give you an error bar where you can do what the top and bottom is but in this case, we want it to be in the same place for the top and the bottom. So we want, instead of us going like the, what you could do is do a point of going, oh, this is the difference from here to here, where you could have like an arrow or something. We want to be able to do it where it just literally goes there and then just stops. And then we can set a line as our target. So all we do is go to our previous year target again. 
and we just drop that in the upper bound and as you can see it's done it there and then if we went into lower bound it then stops so now you don't have this extra line that's going across if you wanted to leave it out you could have a line if you wanted to do it that way but this is just showing you how you can actually just get this particular little line here so now you can see this line matches up perfectly with let's turn off these tool tips because they're just going to get in the way we come here tool tip boom now if we go here as you can see we've got these are matching up exactly with the previous year that we wanted to do so it's always good to just double check that it is doing what it's supposed to be doing and now we know it is we can just remove the previous year from the y-axis so now we're left with this so it does a job but it's still not looking too great at the moment so what we want to do is one extend these error bars so if we come back to here come to here and then down here we have bars and you've got different ones you can do so if you wanted to you could have circles if you wanted or you could have a cross but what we want is just a line and then we want to make it as wide as possible and this is the widest you can get it but what you can do is make the marker size a bit bigger and then you can add size to the border if you want it to be a bit thicker and then you can change the color of what the border is at the moment i'm just going to leave it as that and then i'm going to make the border this color and then i'm going to do that color and we've got it matching up to the colors what we got here and if you want to use the same theme that i'm using i think it's called city park that you can just set up under view under here you can then see city parks there which is this one here and now we got our bar there it doesn't quite fit well with how we're trying to have this nice narrow look so how you do the actual narrow look on this particular bar is if we go over to format our visual and then under columns we have layout and then you've got this space between categories so if we go all the way along to where we feel like we're happy with it and let's do about 65 percent there we go happy with that and then what i like to do is just add a little border just to sort of break it out a little bit more let's make it that light blue there like we did with the target lines so now we just got this nice line that goes around it and you can make it thicker if you wanted to but i prefer just to leave it just the one just so it just gives it a nice outline so now we've got our target line that's doing that now if we want to add the data labels all you have to do is just turn it on and now we got the data labels but what we don't have is the condition formatting or these little variance charts yet so first things first what we want to do is add the conditional formatting now to do the conditional formatting we want to know if it's below the target or not and to do that we need to know a target difference because we're also going to need that of creating our variance as well so to create that particular measure what we want to do is create another measure called target diff what we're going to do is take our main sales measure and then minus last year or the target whatever you're set to this and then this will give you the difference and any that are below are going to be minus any above are going to be plus now you have that what you can do is go over to your format visual still come to your columns and then under here you've got color if you click on the fx you then get the option to be able to set what your rules are and here is what the field you want to select so at the moment it's selecting the actual sales one we want to do the target diff which is this one here so we can see here sales customer order target diff and then we're just going to simply just go if equal to or greater than zero make this there and then this is going to be a minimum if it's less than we want it to be a red this red here and then if it's above zero we want it to be green so then if we do okay we now have our conditional formatting set and then we can do the same with our data labels as well so if we go series all just for now and then do value and then down here we've got our custom order value and then we could change the font if we wanted to make it bold and then again we can go to color go to rules find the target diff again do our new rules make that number number get rid of that get rid of that and then set this to red and then anything above the green and then we've got everything at or above is green and then we do that and now we got it set there we can see a little bit too light so what i'm going to do is just go back and then i'm going to make this a darker green so darker green and a darker red there we go that's a bit better so now it's just slightly red and slightly green but still noticeable enough that it matches up with everything else so we're slowly but surely getting there now now we want to be able to add this variance underneath now how do you do that well what you do you can go to this bit called detail so if we turn that on open this up and let me just scroll up a bit under here we can now put in detail so i'm going to get rid of this to make that the same font that we have before and then you want to be able to drop in what is your formatting here now this isn't something that is already available to us so we need to be able to create it and how you create it is we make use of the two measures that we created earlier 
which is the previous year target, and then also the difference, but also we want to add in these arrows. So as you can see here, we've got an arrow here, an arrow here. This is what these ones are. So what you need to do is create another measure for this one target diff format after sales customer order and then we're just going to use variables to set an up arrow which is using the unichar here and then we're going to do a down arrow variable which is going to be the unichar here and then our target which is going to be the previous year measure or whatever measure you use and then the target difference amount is then the target diff we use to be able to do the conditional formatting and then we want to be able to divide that to make a percent so we want to go target diff amount which is this one here divided by the target here and then we want to set to zero if it comes up at zero come up at zero and then we want to format it as a percentage so within your divide which is this bit here it's just your main bit of formula and then if you want to set it as an actual percentage you then wrap it in format and then we do a comma and then we just do in quotation marks a zero and a percentage sign and then close bracket and then i'm just calling this variable target percent and then all i'm doing within that variable is then creating the return and then doing an if that if the target difference amount is below zero which is what we've got here then we want to make it target percent and then the and sign and then i want to create a space which is where you get this bit of space here and then that's where i've got the quotation mark and then the space between the quotation mark and then another and sign and then a down arrow so we know if the target difference amount is below it's going to point down and then if it's not then we want the target percent with a space and then the up arrow and that's how you get that format and then all you do is drag that into your detail data section and as you can see if i click this we can now see we have this variance showing you the percentage and if it's up or down we want to make that bold and we probably want to make it a little bit smaller let's make that a nine and then color all we have to do is just do the target diff again so we just click on the fx go up here rules come up to here target diff add new rule make that number number remove that remove that make that dark red and make that a dark green and now we have our call out values already set up so now technically you could just go with that and then you're happy with it now you might notice we do have this issue where there are some overlaps this is caused by just where it's just going over the top. What you can do is add a background. Unfortunately, the background is extremely limited. So you can add it in. And then if you wanted to, you can bring down the actual transparent see so we can get it so it shows up a bit more there and then it can still show a bit of the gauge and you can also change multi-line to single line like this but as you notice some of the actual data labels have gone missing like this one here and if we go multi-line you still see it's not there it's not the most pretty way of getting it to look and sit unfortunately and i'm sure this will be fixed over time once more and more stuff gets be added but generally you can still make out what the amounts are and all in all this looks fine and then what we can do is if we just get rid of the grid lines to just make this look a little bit more cleaner and then we can get rid of the y-axis values because we've got the amount centers here so now we got this so now we got that what we can do is now add in what is our title up here and then how you do that is just by adding a measure that is going to be looking at what year and then also using the format comparison and then also the amounts as well so this way people are able to actually see what is actually happening through the whole period than just looking at different months that have performed because overall you can't work out how much is actually been made how much been spent and how much is it actually above altogether so this is where it's good to just have a little call out then have additional cards you can just add it as a title and then to do that all you have to do is just create a measure call it whatever you want i just called it title after the normal name of sales customer order and then i've just done in quotation marks sales during and then a space so you get a space there and then and and then join and then be able to do max year so whatever year it's selected it's always going to max to what year it is then another and sign and then was with two spaces is beside it in the quotation marks and then and and then all i'm doing is formatting to round so it give you a thousand separator so we can see here it's 733,000. that is just by formatting the sales measure and then just setting it in quotation marks for the formatting zero comma zero zero hash and then that gives you this layout here and then i'm just finishing up with extra bit of wording with the space again and compared to previous period was and then and 
And then I've just put the target diff in, which we've just used for our extra data label callouts for our variants. And that's it. And then all you have to do is just go to general under here, title. And then instead of using the text that's in there, we can just go format, find your title, do OK. And now that's in there. And now that title is loaded up we want to be able to now add additional formatting and the great thing is it's just exactly the same process with that target diff so all we want to do is come over to the background and then click on conditional formatting under the title and then we want to just search for let's change this first to rules and then search for target diff find the sales one there it is do new rule add in a zero take away the zero here because it's background let's make it a light red and a light green and if we just do okay we now have that in the background and then if we go to conditional formatting on the text color it's time we go up to rules search for target diff come down to the one we want add a new rule there make that zero remove that zero and then because it's the text we want to make it darker so a darker red if it's less than zero and a darker green if it is greater than zero and if we add that in we can now see we've got that changing and just to prove it works let's go up to 2015 because that was negative and as you can see here it does the same and now we've got that as well and if you want to you can add an actual conditional formatting as well to the effects of the border so if we do visual border and then if we just add a padding of let's say five so it matches up there you can see we've got a border around there so again like with all the others all we have to do is just go to the conditional formatting conditional format anything really apart from the background colors of the data labels for some peculiar reason but hopefully they'll update that in a future release and then we can just go in new rules target diff sales target diff zero and move zero and then set it the colors that we had which is that one and that one and then do okay and now you can see we have around here it will change color go here again it's now red around the edge you just got that that can do that you don't have to do that it just adds to the actual part there and now we have our final gauge chart we can change the size of the fonts down here if we wanted to up to you and there we go a gauge column chart but what happens if you suddenly went mm, do you know what i want to have it as an actual bar instead of a column chart so what you can do is just click on your chart, go up to your clustered bar chart, click on it, and there you go. It's practically done. You didn't even have to do anything extra. So really, if you wanted to start at that point, you just do all the other processes that we've already gone through, and then it automatically does it. The only difference is, as you might remember from before when we are playing around with the data levels, you can make the single line. So if we go up to our format visual, come down to our data labels, come all the way down and we'll see layout and then layout instead of multi-line, do single line. We now have it sitting like this. It's great, but we do have this where it kind of overlaps on the gauges and then it sits on the inside. So what we can do is this time add a background. As we can see, we got it there. And because I've already got some transparency happening, we could like literally just create it. So let's make it a very light sort of color, maybe even lighter. And then it just adds this little bit as you can see here, you can still see the gauge line. It's just hidden just behind it, but it's not taking up too much where it's affecting the actual call out value in the data label. So in a way, this one works a lot better than this one because of where you're trying to fit in so many. It all depends on what kind of view you want to have. This one might be the better one if you want it to actually look a lot cleaner, because as you can see where it overlaps, it goes here and then still has that transparency where you can actually see through it and actually see the end. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give a like and subscribe. And also, if you want to learn about some more tricks you can do with conditional formatting and call out values on metrics, check out this KPI cards video where I cover not only conditional formatting based on the total, but also on set reference labels as well. So as always, until next time.